Hey guys, how's it going? We have an absolute kitchen sink assortment of things to put in the ground today. We have seedlings. We have brand new plants that are just coming out. We've got some new roses to put in the rose garden. We've even got some things that I dug out of a flower bed several days ago and I still need to get them planted out. It was one of those moments where I was in the greenhouse watering all this stuff and I just thought, you know what, let's just gather it up, get it out in the ground. And I know it's completely random, but there are some really interesting plants in here. So I thought you guys might enjoy seeing it. Let me give you a little tour of some of the things that we are going to be working with today, starting with these beautiful plants. And these are the biggest ones uh, that we're working with. These are a brand new pulmonaria, also called lungwort, called pinkablue. Uh, they grow about, I think, 18 inches tall, 24 inch spread, zone three through nine. They are going to go right in this flower bed. That's why we're starting right here. It's a nice shady spot, but I think these are a new one either this year or next year. They've already done their bloom cycle. They bloom earlier in the spring uh, and they are so interesting because you have two different colors in the flowers. You've got pink ones and you've got blue ones and they're just so sweet and so beautiful. But not only that, when they're done blooming, they're still a gorgeous plant and they tend to handle our heat and our wind. Like the leaves are kind of scratchy. They're almost kind of Velcro-ish. Um, so tough. I'm guessing that makes them deer resistant. Does that say so on here? Mm, it doesn't say so. I wouldn't want to eat these, that's for sure, because they're kind of prickly, but they're a lot tougher. They don't burn on the edges like uh, some hostas will. They just are really beautiful with a really unique leaf. Uh, the next thing we have here are Rosella hibiscus, which are starting to bud. This is the actual hibiscus that you harvest the flowers for tea. And one of you guys sent me out seeds for these. So these we started in the greenhouse earlier on. Uh, we're gonna pop these out next to where we planted our corn in the new property, because I think they get quite large and they want full sun. This is a complete experiment, but they've got really interesting coloring, like that red on their stems. I'm excited to see the buds. We've got a flat of double pink columbine, which are also, I'm gonna just tuck them in all over in here. I wouldn't mind columbine kind of just taking over some sections in this space. Those were also started from seed in the greenhouse. We've got artichokes that we started from seed. So this I'm either gonna love or I'm gonna hate, but we're putting the artichokes in the Hartley cold frames. I think they are absolutely beautiful plants. I think they'll be able to handle the heat that the cold frames bring. And I think they're gonna be the right size. I think they'll grow up and produce their artichokes and flowers at the perfect level for us to see them. I'm hoping. I mean, it's just technically an annual plant for us. Uh, I did try to mulch them up one year when we had them out in the cut flower garden, and I think I had one come back out of like 20 some. Uh, so, you know, we can either close the lids and try to have them winter over in there, It'd be kind of a fun experiment, uh, or, you know, they, they'll just be annuals and we'll do something different in there next year if it doesn't work out this year. These are, I think, an Ann Fulkard hardy geranium, bright pink blooms. They were coming up behind the chicken coop in just little pieces, and I just planted some annuals back there, so I dug these out and they sat in this tub for uh, maybe a week. I don't know. It's been a minute. Surprised they're still alive. I've got a couple more lantana. Benjamin and I planted two of these out in the garden the other day, so I'm just going to add these to the mix. We've got some kangaroo paw, which I picked these up on a shopping day this winter, like in January or something. Maybe it was February. I don't know a tremendous amount about these flowers, except for I think they like it on the dry side. I'm going to plant them all in one container together, but I just think they are so interesting looking They're blooming right now and then we've got four new roses that just arrived from heirloom roses we've got we'll pop a picture on the screen a madam and a set and is that how you say it? and a set we have a black lady we've got april love and whoop, let me turn it around Ooh, cream abundance. So a little look in this area. I'm planning on putting the lungwort right in here. You know, at one point we planted this whole thing full of hookera and hookera just aren't very reliable for us. I've got like two left out of, I don't know, did I plant like 15 or 17? It was some insane amount and it was really pretty, uh, but they just, there's a few varieties that do really well for us and come back like spearmint. Um, the pistachio one does really well for us. The uh, peach, something peach. Crimson Curls does pretty good. Anyway, it's, it, I don't know, it's trial and error with those. But there's some other really pretty things. We put the Epimedium in here earlier on this spring. It's doing pretty good. Hardy Geraniums are just such an amazing perennial. They are so pretty. And you guys, this is shade right here. Hardy Geraniums, they do shade, they do sun. They're really versatile. They're kind of like a boxwood um, in that they'll handle so much in their light department. Hey, Russell. I have some on this side as well, and they're blooming so beautifully. 
wouldn't mind adding some more of those. Anyway, I think we'll just get the lungwort out and the columbine, get those planted. I think I'm gonna take it slow. We'll just stop after I'm done with each section and take a look. It's done all the columbine, the pulmonaria. They look really good here. The AC unit is running right behind me, so hopefully that's not too loud. I just love that little swoop of color. It's so pretty. So we can add more hookera right here to this little area or not. You know, we could do, I've got some really pretty acarus grass that we could add that would look really pretty and soft over the walkway. Uh, but I did break up the columbine into two different sections because i know that this one is pink petticoat because i bought the seeds from johnny's uh, and they're a double pink that are beautiful one of you guys sent me a double pink columbine which i think is really similar if not the same thing although they did grow sort of different like these are a little bit more robust and stockier um, and a little bit more open in their growth habits so far. And these are on the small side and the leaves are a little bit more delicate. Either way, it's gonna be a big, beautiful, hopefully drift of pink columbine. And the other areas that I have columbine planted, they're still going for it right now, still in full bloom and beautiful. And I like their leaves even after they're done blooming. I think they're just really soft and uh, kind of lush looking. I think we're gonna head out to the rose garden next. Aaron's mowing today. We've got beautiful blue sky, some clouds. We're supposed to get storms later on. Things are looking good out here, you guys. I am just so thrilled with how much these roses have bulked up. I mean, we're seeing some color here. You can see the truck. Paul's working on a mulch project over here. It was easier to take the truck in closer. Kind of funny to see that parked out there. But anyway, lots of pretty color. We are trying to decide what kind of tags we want to put in here. It'll be so much easier for me to walk through and tell you guys all the names of these when I can see the tags a little easier. Because right now, you know, you have to go in and kind of dig out whatever. This one is the Charles Darwin right here. Look at that. Oh. Anyway, some of these were just itty bitty when we planted them and some didn't even have leaves. And we haven't lost a single one. Every single one looks like it's growing and healthy. So I'm going to try to place these in the right rows. Like the Madame Anisette is kind of a really pretty cream. And then of course the cream abundance, those will go in kind of the white cream row. April Love, we're out of room in the pink rows. So I'm just kind of starting to plant those wherever there's space. And then the Black Lady is a beautiful deep, it's like a deep reddish purple. And that'll go in this row here. Oh. Here's some breeze. Oh, that feels good. The humidity today is like in the high 50s, which we're not used to. We're used to about 10. <laughs> so I know some of you will laugh at me, some of you from the south that have really, really high humidity, but boy, it makes it extra hot out here. The breeze feels great. Okay, so I'm gonna get these in the ground. Got them in and I counted, we have 22 more spots left for roses out here. We've really filled it in. I think there was what, 86 or 87 spots. So we've planted a lot this year. April Love ended up right here. 
And then we've got the Madame Anisette and Cream Abundance over here and Black Lady right there. This one, I was just looking at it. This one's called Fun in the Sun. And it is so pretty. This is definitely our biggest one. Beautiful color. They kind of age out in a pink, in pink tones. Look at those. Oh, so pretty. And this one is Louise Clements. I love that peachy pink. This one's massive. This one's called Heavenly Scented, and it's a very appropriate name. They're amazing. I'm really enjoying this one as well. This one's called Edith's Darling. Lots of pretty ones out here. So we are close to where the lantana needs to go, so that's where I'm going to head next. Okay. So this is where we planted those reminiscent pink roses and echinacea the other day. And then Benjamin went to the greenhouse and picked these out to plant. I told him there were two more and he said, ah, you can add them later. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. We're just gonna pop these in quick right here. They look good. They look perfect up next to the blue spruce, actually. It's a beautiful color combination. This is called shamrock peach. This is one that doesn't get super big, 12 to 16 inches tall, 12 to 14 inches wide. It's an annual here for us, but we thought it'd be fun to have it out here for pollinators and just a nice bright pop of color because, you know, there's a lot of, lot of space in here we have yet to fill. So we'll enjoy that this season. All right, let's tackle the hibiscus next. And this is where they're gonna go, a little bit further down there, but I thought we would just take a little walk down the rows just so you guys could see how things are doing, a little update here. So this was, I think, one of the first things we planted out here. The onions are doing great. We've had so, so much rain. We've been able to turn the drip system off out here quite a lot of the time. Uh, we've got marigolds here and some sage. There are sweet potatoes growing, which, they're starting to put on a little size. There are lots of weeds out here too, and they get a little thicker once you get down. You see we made it uh, down toward the end of the potatoes there, and then we need to pick up and weed again. But onions and shallots are great. There are cosmos coming up in this area, and sweet potatoes. So cosmos on this side, sweet potatoes on that side. And then our potatoes. They're looking happy and healthy. Sunflowers as well, looking really, really good. Potatoes are also starting to flower. Peppers are looking amazing. I mean, these plants are already loading up. I think there are peppers on every single plant that we, have, that we have out here. They're just amazing. Then we've got our tomatoes right here, which they are looking really good too. All of them except for one, which I am not sure what happened here, but that doesn't look good. We have so many tomatoes that I'm not, I'm not worrying about it. I might just cut back the damaged stuff and see if it grows. Yeah, but all the rest of them are putting on lots of growth. Uh, several of them have already set tomatoes. I know there was a couple down here. Yeah, we got some nice looking ones on this plant. Then all of our vine crops, every single hill is up. Some are a lot bigger than others. Then we've got our corn right here, and this is where the hibiscus are gonna go. So I had planned on leaving this spot empty to plant another successive crop of corn. And then I got those sweet potato slips. Let's see if I can walk over here. I got these in from Johnny's. I forgot I ordered them and they looked horrible. I thought they were gonna die, to be honest. But I think most of them took. Hard to distinguish those from the weeds at the moment, but I figured with the rest of the space that I don't have sweet potatoes in this area, I'll just tuck those hibiscus in. I'm gonna probably space them quite a lot closer than they should be planted just so I can tuck them all in out here, but we'll just see how it goes. This is gonna be a learning experience for me. There they are, placed roughly two feet apart from one another. I think they need to be further than that, but we will see. I had to leave that space because of the sweet potatoes. So this will be an experiment. They look happy though. 
very strong stems. So I've got 12 planted. I had a friend that took three of them. So we'll see how she does with them. I'm not even a tea drinker. Uh, I've never really cared for tea. I like coffee. But if we can harvest some of those flowers and I could give them to friends that do like tea, I think that would be really fun. Our list is getting shorter. Three more varieties here. Let's head to the Hartley. So we can plant those up in the cold frame. And I think I'm gonna pot the kangaroo pot and put those near, nearby, in the same area. guys there's the artichokes i put six on either side i think it's gonna be pretty I, that's just my hunch but i think it's gonna work out really well i did position them a little bit closer to the front so that as they do put on a little bit of height uh you know they won't be back where it is the shortest they'll be kind of closer to where the lids are open more but i think that icy blue texture and the kind of really unique look of those leaves and then of course the unique blooms will be a fun thing to see. So there's that side and this side, they look identical. And then back here, among our other pots, I tucked in the kangaroo pot. Now the variety is Kanga Pink and I thought that these liked it really dry, but the tag as I was reading it said that they wanna be kept evenly moist. So I don't know, this is gonna be interesting. I did let them dry out in the greenhouse. It did say on the tag too that you can grow them as an indoor plant, which I experienced and had really good luck with when it's cold out. And then, you know, they can go out in the summertime in colder climates. They seem to take to the drying out periods. <laughs> Maybe they just weren't growing as actively at that point and didn't need as much water. So I'm just gonna keep my eyes on this one. I did not run drip to it because I thought they wanted to be kept dry. And our drip goes off every other day for these pots. So, hmm, we'll see. I think it looks really neat though right here. Just kind of this nice little accent. And our urns over here are doing great. Remember the Sibella Carmine uh, Silene? I had to pull the drip tube out of this one because I think that this pot is plugged. I came over here when the drip was running and there was just standing water in there. So I'm gonna have to maybe sneak a stick down in there, in there and try to poke a hole through the drain hole. Ugh, they look good though. And there's that one, they've really filled in. So of the Joey's lamb's tail, look at this. They've put on a lot of growth since we put them in here. Hopefully they make it through the canopy of the silene here. I'm really excited about how these turned out because they were all from seed. So fun. Okay, we are on to our last project, which is getting those hardy geraniums in the ground and we're gonna head out to the South Garden for that. I changed my mind on the geranium placement. As I was driving out to the South Garden, I remembered this spot underneath the lilac where I've tried several things. We do have lamium growing, lots of beautiful lamium. And then I planted some Montgomery astilbes last year. You might be able to see this one and these over here. It just, it does not stay wet enough and it doesn't matter if I supplement water them like this one took and it's doing okay so we can leave it there. But I'm thinking of tucking these geraniums in because they can handle more shade. Um, they may not be as productive in the bloom department, but that doesn't really matter right here. I just kind of want to fill it in with some greenery. So I think that's what I'm going to do. They get some late afternoon sun. Um, and that could be one of the problems with the astilbe. They're just such fussy plants for us. Um, yeah, I think it just might be a little bit too much. But these might be perfect. Let's do it.
And there we have it. <laughs> they don't look like much at the moment, but I tucked them in right along that drip line. We still need to mulch in this area as well. And then, you know, as I find, we've got this variety everywhere. As I find little babies, I can dig them up and just kind of tuck them in around in here. I need to add an extra drip line right through here. Uh, at that time when I decide to do that, but they should do well in this area. And you guys, that is it for today's projects. I'm so excited about all the little loose ends we just buttoned up, especially the artichokes. Of all the things we planted today, getting the food producing things in the ground, like they need to be planted so they can root in and start growing in order to produce something this season. So getting that done was especially uh, relieving to me. That's been kind of on my mind. And I'm sure I'm going to have a couple more of these type of days here soon where I just need to load up the gator and just go get things planted. I've still got mahogany slender hibiscus in the greenhouse, the little seedlings. Um, those need to find a home as well as a few zinnias and dusty miller that I still have in there. Just little things. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of the different type of plants that went in the ground today and we'll be giving updates. We have been trying to be better about garden tours and I'm trying to update too, like walking through the new property. Just as we are in new areas, I'll try to be good about showing other things that we've done, you know, in the recent past. So you can see how things are going. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.